Welcome everyone to this uh, webinar. I'm uh, Thomas Forjek. Uh, I'm a product leader uh, mainly focused on uh, crypto assets, cryptocurrencies, and blockchain applications. Uh, what we will walk you through here is uh, our offering um, related to crypto custodianship um, to hopefully help you present and communicate uh, uh, these issues uh, better um, focused a lot on the problems and challenges that the custodians uh, face. Um, there, if you'll have any questions, uh, I'll uh, sh show my email uh, on at the very uh, last slide of the presentation. So feel free to drop me any questions. I'd be more than happy to, um, to reply to them. All right, so some basics. Uh, you know this drill, obviously. Um, some basic security of the key material is necessary for all applications with crypto. It, of course, um, you know, increases in magnitude, uh, in importance. Um, so with our HSM, you know, as, as much as any other top of the shelf HSMs uh, is, is great at and can offer is um, key generation entropy for truly random and unique keys. So you don't need to be worried that your um, crypto asset private key would be um, generated by someone else. Uh, physical protection of the key material, um, you know, anyone who tries to tamper or open the device um, will trigger um, an event which will destroy uh, the encryption key. And finally, side channel attack protection against uh, key retrieval. We've seen uh, side channel attacks on Intel, AMD platforms uh, recently. Um, so this is quite important bit, especially when it comes to potentially hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars uh, worth of assets. So now we'll, we're getting to a more sophisticated stuff because with uh, the, the specific with cryptocurrencies and crypto assets is that only one misuse of a key can potentially lead to disastrous consequences, unlike with PKI, where you, know, you can simply revoke and, and reissue the key if necessary. So that's where the importance of uh, key and asset control um, kicks in. And we do this uh, with our smart key attributes feature available in uh, Primus HSMs. Uh, so how this works, um, you have your uh, crypto asset key stored in uh, the HSMs key store, and you attach a policy which defines uh, rules based on which the key can uh, be operated with. Um, so these rules at its core have uh, um, the approval of public keys, uh, which uh, you will want to require um, uh, some parties to approve a transaction uh, with a key. You can define a minimum quorum uh, of this group that needs to be met in order to approve a transaction. You can combine a few of these groups, um, as many as you want and you can set a time lock and timeout for the transaction. Uh, and all of this you can combine or is combined in this uh, authentication token, which again, you can create as many um, as you want. So this gives you um, a really, really flexible um, options to, to meet any, you know, even the most strictest and most uh, sophisticated policies of, um, of your, or of course your customer's organization. And now all of these you, um, uh, you define for usage of the key. So in this case, this would be typically a cryptocurrency transaction, blocking the key, unlocking the key and uh, modifying the policies. Uh, so how this would work in practice is, for example, you would have uh, three out of five um, or two out of five forum for uh, approving Bitcoin transaction, um, maybe four hour time lock and 24 hour timeout. And uh, let's say someone suspects something fishy going on within those four hours. So you would have a very loose uh, policy to blocking the key. So only um, you know, one um, say uh, risk officer or some, some uh, automated fraud detection system uh, could trigger a block event, um, which would block the key from being used and from the transaction to be signed. Uh, then you would run your investigation, um, find out that everything is fine, it was a false alarm, but you would want to have a pretty strict um, rule for unblocking the key, so like high quorum, for example. And then of course you would want to have a really strict rule for modifying uh, any of these policies involving say a CISO or a CEO um, and so on. 
So all of this can be integrated using um, our JC provider. Um, there's a tutorial available in the Javadoc, uh, which um, walks uh, the, the Java developer through um, all the practical um, use cases. Um, and the GC, uh, JC provider um, is typically integrated uh, currently with uh, the customer's business application directly. Now, uh, in, in, the, in the very near future, in the few weeks, uh, we are releasing um, some uh, improvements on top of this, mainly, oh, sorry. Um, so let me go, go uh, back and uh, just to mention, uh, why is this, um, why is this superior to uh, multisig, which many crypto custodians uh, will be familiar with, um, and with uh, other solutions? So, um, mainly, um, some of you might know multisig is actually not universally applicable across all blockchains. So, many blockchains don't support it at all, or the the uh, implementation is different. Um, so, this because this is a uh, as far as the blockchain is con concerned. Uh, this is a uh, single single key, um, and uh, you know, all the approvals are happening within the HSMs. Then you can use uh, a single unified implementation across uh, all assets of block, uh, blockchain. Then uh, this is also superior in privacy because with uh, your multi-sig, uh, the blockchain can see um, that uh, you well not you in particular, but that there is an address which is subject to multi-sig. And that all can be can be uh, subject to um, chain analysis. Um, and finally, the policies that you can define this way are much more flexible. Um, some of you might have heard about multi-party computation, which um, is being explored a lot recently, uh, which tried to or tries to um, solve all of these issues, uh, but it has um, additional of its own issues. Uh, mainly, it doesn't support uh, time rules, uh, so you can't define this time lock or timeout with uh, SMPC. Um, you still need your keys to be somehow protected. So um, if you are just relying on on your standard unprotected uh, um, systems, servers, or, or PCs, um, then HSM obviously is uh, superior in this in this sense because it provides uh, hardware protection of the keys. Um, and uh, finally, uh, this is a lot more scalable than MPC from the reports that we're seeing um, from three or four keys uh, the, or approval keys, um, the MPC is, um, doesn't really scale well and the computation is really slow. So now let's move on to uh, some addition to, to, this, uh, to this landscape and that is uh, our new product coming out in a couple of weeks um, called Transaction Security Broker. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, with um, with smart key attributes currently, um, you need to integrate uh, using the JC provider. Um, what a transaction security broker does is that it's its own standalone engine um, with a REST API. So then you are uh, not dependent on on Java integration. It's uh, language agnostic. And it also maintains the state for you. So it makes it a lot easier uh, to, to use this smart key attributes uh, because it, uh, it collects uh, requests, it populates approvals, it will wait for the time lock for you, um, send uh, the, the approval back uh, only when, when uh, that is valid um, and so on. So then your business uh, application integrates simply through the REST API um, same with the uh, with the approval clients and the approval clients in this example, uh, mobile and let's say YubiKey, uh, they'll have their own private approval keys within them, which will be linked to these approval private keys uh, in uh, in this group. So moving on, uh, we are looking. A uh, quite a bit further down our roadmap and zooming out the ecosystem um, that we are working on. Um, and uh, so we have the picture that we introduced uh, previously here. And what we are introducing uh, in addition here is um, our upcoming Securities Immunized Trusted Execution Environment. Um, so what it, this will allow is um, for you to load um, uh, custom functionality, uh, signed and secured and uh, highly segregated um, uh, using jar files or in, in, in jar files, 
to, um, to the TE. And then you can have a lot more sophisticated and automated um, approval uh, filters uh, while not compromising on the, on the security. So these filters could be, for example, an amount filter, you know, which would um, uh, interpret the, the transaction payload, uh, find out what's the amount, uh, for example, integrate with some external trusted exchange rate source um, and um, validate based on, based on that. For example, you could have a rule uh, below or above a million dollars. Uh, then you could integrate some know your token and anti money laundering services, uh, some external blacklist, or you could hard code a whitelist to automate uh, your internal crypto liquidity management. All of these would have their own respective um, or their own approval of private keys in the key store, which will use the same design, same hardware as the HSM itself, and their approval keys uh, or public keys would be represented in this group um, in, uh, in the, 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 the crypto asset uh, key policy. And then the TE obviously would uh, simply serve as yet another um, approval client for the transaction security broker. All right, let's move forward, further. Um, so a different topic for, for crypto custodians and super important one is the uh, protection of the keys from loss or from hardware failure. Um, because obviously when you lose your private keys, you lost the asset. Um, so here the redundancy um, and um, real-time synchronization is super important. Um, and uh, most of you probably know how very easy is it to set up uh, our Primus HSMs in a, in a cluster. Um, so uh, what uh, the custodians would typically obviously do is to set up a geo-redundant cluster to make sure that they don't lose uh, access uh, to the asset. We obviously have the same setup in the Cloud HSM. So for those uh, perhaps smaller uh, crypto custodians who would like to um, uh, use HSM, uh, but would like to use our, our cloud HSM, then this comes uh, in, uh, in a package uh, automatically. Um, we hear from uh, our contacts and perhaps uh, you uh, more and more as well about uh, B2B um, applications and uh, implementations for crypto custodians and uh, crypto asset platforms. Um, so here we have a couple of products which are very relevant and, and important for this. Um, the basic obviously is the multi-tenancy where you can run uh, many partitions from uh, one HSM and thus have uh, partition segregation um, or custom segregation uh, through the partitions. Uh, the absolute must for crypto platforms is BIP32 and 44 support, which we do support. This is uh, for those of you who might not know. Uh, this is to uh, be able to uh, derive keys from a single um, single uh, master key uh, or use a structure where you have a master key which has its own account keys and those account keys then derive um, the simple keys themselves. This also um, significantly increases uh, uh, the virtual capacity of the HSM because now you don't need to store um, every key on the HSM, but you can simply derive them. Uh, so basically that gives you virtually unlimited uh, capacity of the key storage. Uh, one really cool thing that we uh, are uh, coming out very, very soon, um, it actually might be out by the time you, you watch this, is uh, partition administration uh, terminal, um, which is an upgrade to um, our decanos. Um, which will allow you to directly or allow the customers to directly uh, manage the partition uh, remotely. Um, so how this would work is um, either you or your customers could uh, offer um, or could have uh, an HSM cluster set up that they would uh, run and, and manage uh, using their own decanus connected to, uh, to the HSM itself. Um, but they could give access to uh, their customers or you could give access to your customers um, who would rent a partition only uh, to be able to connect and to, um, to make configuration and, uh, and security changes on the partition, even including cutting the HSM administrator off um, that connection altogether. 
um, so they can reset their partition credentials. Um, they can set the partition so that the HSM administrator can't access it, and they don't need to trust the HSM administrator at all uh, with their credentials and with protection of their of their keys. Um, theoretically, the only thing that the uh, HSM administrator could do um, is to disconnect or delete the partition, um, obviously. Um, but uh, there's that level of, of, of trust or lack thereof, um, which is pretty cool and important for especially um, crypto startups who might want to use the HSM and cloud HSM, but they don't, don't want to trap, uh, trust the HSM operator um, with accessing the keys. Uh, one important topic for crypto custodians is, uh, is fraud, whether internal or external, and uh, auditing. And for this, we have a couple of things in place um, which uh, help this with this uh, a lot. Uh, so multi-authorization that we already uh, described is, um, is a very basic thing that is uh, necessary, where you have multiple parties um, approving a few or uh, approving transactions. Um, and then we have uh, audit logs which uh, are signed, which uh, in uh, the near future will be um, immutable. Um, we are taking inspiration from the blockchain where we will be slicing the logs uh, to um, sort of blocks which will contain signature of uh, the previous uh, block. And um, of course they are tamper protected. Um, so this uh, will uh, be these two, the, the multi-authorization and the audit, audit logs uh, in combination uh, create a you know, plausible de uh, deniability a full audit log, um, which helps uh, with, um, with uh, trust and, and partnerships, potentially insurance um, and so on. One new thing that we released uh, very recently is um, key attestation. Um, so what this does is um, it allows you to cryptographically verify the origin and the attribute of the key. Um, so how this works is um, you, uh, you can, or, or we released, um, or we, we made our root certificate of our root key available um, and the, we insert the root key into the EAL4 plus, uh, the CC uh, EAL4 plus chip uh, in the Securities uh, Primus HSM, uh, which then creates its own device key and device certificate. And then each partition creates their own attestation key and timestamp key, um, which are signed with, uh, with this device uh, key. So then what you can do through the JCE provider, you can uh, ask for key attributes, uh, which are signed, um, and you can check the signature uh, with a certificate which contains a chain of trust going all the way from partition through the device to uh, the root uh, certificate uh, which is available at uh, our website. So what this gives you is a cryptographic proof that a key has been generated on Securacy's HSM, on this particular HSM, and on this particular partition. Um, and then there's uh, this timestamp key, which serves for um, the, the, which is necessary for the time rules in the smart key attributes that I uh, explained before. Um, one final note, uh, you uh, for sure have heard uh, many times before um, some, some complaints uh, of uh, um, administrator experience of some of the competing products. Um, so this is where we are quite proud of uh, delivering uh, vastly superior uh, experience on, uh, on a number of fronts. Um, we recently released uh, a new uh, tutorial for uh, Java developers integrating our JC. We will of course have something equivalent for the upcoming trusted, uh, uh, sorry, transaction security broker. Um, and then you know our Decanos, which is really, really a uh, convenient and superior way of uh, um, managing the device uh, remotely. And we will have the new version with this uh, new design uh, coming up in a couple of weeks as well. So that is all from my side. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop me an email 
um, and uh, I'll make sure to to reply. Thanks again.